Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the August 2022 Clinical Practice and Professional Update video. My name is Stuart Woolley, Primary Practice Leader within BCEHS. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I'm coming to you today from the traditional and unceded territory of the Stolos people in Chilliwack, where on a daily basis I'm grateful to learn, live and play in the environment that's around me. So thank you very much. Today's video, I'd like to start by discussing the clinical safety plan and redirecting you to the video that was released last week by Chief Systems and Strategy Officer Kevin Smith, alongside Chief Medical Officer Dr. Mike Christian. The clinical safety plan is essentially a 24 seven hour by hour service delivery tool where we can monitor service pressures around the province and react accordingly to ensure that we're continuing to deliver the high quality patient care to patients throughout British Columbia, and also continue to support staff that are responding to patients. Depending on the clinical safety plan level, you may see clinical leaders and paramedic practice leaders are responding, as we did last week as the CSP level increased. We're responding in our clinical capacity to a range of 911 calls throughout the communities in BC to alleviate some of the pressures on crews responding to calls, to provide some leadership and managerial support and supervisory support in the communities, offer some on-the-spot advice and clinical advice that might be needed and support at hospitals, and also uh, ensure that we're trying to support your, your health and well-being as best as possible during these uh, increased pressures. Please do have a look at the video that was released last week for more information and the link will be posted, hopefully just here. You'll notice last Friday we released a new assess, see, treat and refer pathway for patients suffering from a heat emergency. Now this pathway is designed to assess patients from an environmental heat emergency, not through an exertional heat emergency. And this pathway is quite unique. Following a good thorough clinical assessment on scene, we have two options. We can either refer the patient into the uh, conventional assess, see, treat and refer pathway where they'll stay at home and receive a clinical call back within 24 to 48 hours via our paramedic specialist teams. Or again, following your clinical assessment, we'll convey them to a cooling center around the province. Please only make one or two, uh, please only make these decisions following that good clinical assessment. And you do need to still contact clinical um, before we make that disposition. We need to ensure that we're capturing the right patients, we're clinically safe, and we've had a joint uh, shared decision-making discussion to ensure we're, we're acting in the patient's best interest. For more information, you can look on the BCEHS handbook, and there's also a learning package on Learning Hub that's available to complete for you. I'm really pleased to announce that we've brought on board the Tri-Cities Urgent and Primary Care Centre for crews working in the Tri-City and New Westminster area. More information can be found in the BCEHS handbook, especially the generic inclusion and exclusion criteria that all UPCCs around the province will accept. Please do have a look at these and please do familiarise yourself with the four patient categories that we can take into urgent primary care centres. Non-traumatic back pain, allergic reactions, minor burns and minor wounds. Please, I do continue to encourage you uh, to utilise these as best as possible. And any patient who you think is suitable for an urgent and primary care centre, please continue to have the, the clinical consultation with clinical as well. We do this because we need to capture the amount of patients that we're redirecting from an emergency department and also to ensure that we have the capacity at the urgent care centre that we're taking the patient to. Uh, thanks to the great work of one of our PCPs acquiring ECGs in the community, we've been able to capture more STEMIs in the field and provide better care than ever before for our patients. It's just a reminder that when we're transmitting ECGs in a PCP capacity from a life pack 15, the only two times that we're going to be doing this is either when it's requested by a physician or when the ECG reads meets ST elevation criteria on the printout. Uh, please only transmit it in one of those two occasions. For ACPs, 
uh, transmitting ECGs from LIPAC 15s, we know at the minute that we currently have two methods when transmitting ECGs. One is directly to a PCR facility um, and the other is for a clinical consultation. The ACP LifePAC 15 is equipped with an external modem, whereas your PCP LifePAC 15 doesn't use a modem, but rather utilizes the LifeNet gateway on your Toughbook and uses the Toughbook's data. At the minute, there's no plans to remove the external modem from the ACP 15s, LifePAC 15s. However, we do recognize that in the event that a modem fails, the monitor is configured to transmit using the modem or the Toughbook. This is dependent on the ACP LifePAC 15 having received the update. This will be confirmed by the hospital list now displaying the full name. More information and instructions can be found in the BC EHS handbook under Siren, How To and then Cardiac Monitors if you need a bit of a reminder on how to find that. Again for ACPs, we're really excited to announce that the STEMI thrombolysis uh, pathway is going to be expanded. This is following a successful pilot in the Kamloops region for pre-hospital administration of tenecteclase by ACPs. We're going to expand this to Prince George and Nanaimo. ACPs that are in that designated area will be able to complete an online learning hub course, followed by a face-to-face -face session with an emergency physician. This is a result of the fantastic work in collaboration with Island Health, Northern Health and Interior Health. The go live date for this is September the 12th, 2022, and all ACPs working in those respective areas, Nanaimo, Prince George and Kamloops, you will have been emailed the information to register for the course. If you haven't and you're in that area, please don't hesitate to contact John Deakin at jonathan.deakin at bcehs.ca and we'll arrange to get that link sent to you. Finally, um, August 31st is International Overdose Awareness Day. This is a really important day for us in BC that we can take a stand to say that there's no more stigma and no more shame about overdoses. We know that within British Columbia, the toxic drug events are responsible for more deaths than suicides, homicides, drownings, MVIs, and fire-related deaths combined. The number is immense. And as a paramedic on the front line, we're uniquely positioned to help reduce the toxic substance related harm in the community. We take information and we listen and learn from people with lived and learning experiences, especially with substance use. We know as paramedics through research, these patients in the community can help shape our practice to continue to deliver the best care that we possibly can. There's a few ways that you can get involved on August 31st. And not just August 31st, any time within our practice that we're in this environment. You can register for community toxic alert, drug alerts on the ambulance phone, and you'll get the updates through. You can offer take home naloxone kits and educate on their use. If you don't have any naloxone kits, please speak to your unit chief and they'll be able to arrange for a stock to be uh, delivered to you. You can find information online about the Lifeguard app, which since May has saved numerous lives. And it's a free app, downloadable, that triggers an automatic emergency call after a certain amount of time when there's been no interaction with the app once it's been opened. Uh, you can utilise the BCEHS Assess, See, Treat and Refer pathway for substance use. This pathway, again, is unique in itself because this is one of very few pathways where there's no need to contact clinical to do the referral. You can do this directly from the patient's side following your assessment and treatment and the notification will go straight to their health authority. We're still working with Northern Health to get this on board so I'm hopefully uh, I'm hoping that that's going to uh, be province-wide very soon for us. You can also get on the internet and find out and learn where your safe consumption sites are, maybe in your response area or your neighbouring response area, or know where to direct patients to get this information. Many communities throughout the province will be holding events for International Overdose Day, so do keep an eye out in your area and keep an eye out on the BC EHS Operations Facebook page for more information that's coming through there. Finally, to wrap up, um, we're seeing more patients in the community uh, experiencing CO poisoning and it's just a reminder that the standard pulse oximetry devices that we have are not accurate in assessing a patient's true oxygenation status when poisoning with carbon monoxide. A standard pulse oximeter 
can't and is unable to distinguish between oxyhemoglobin and carboxyhemoglobin and can give us some false readings. The true diagnostic is with blood gases in, in hospital. So we need to uh, use some symptom management with these patients and do a good assessment. And if we suspect CO poisoning, please don't rely on a standard pulse oximeter to give us a true reading. Thanks so much for your time. Um, please enjoy the rest of the summer. If you have some downtime with friends and family, please enjoy it, refresh, recharge, and we look forward to seeing you on the streets and, and operation on calls. And if you see us about, please don't hesitate to ask us any clinical questions and we'll do our best to answer for you. If you're working, please look after each other, stay safe, stay hydrated, and do some good patient care that we always do for us. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your unit chief, local paramedic practice educator, or you can email clinicalpractice at bcehs.ca and the paramedic practice leader team will get back in touch with you as soon as possible. Thanks very much and take care.